On today's episode, we're going to talk about German habits I've adopted since I've moved to Germany. The longer you live in a place, the more you start picking up on those little things and stay tuned to find out which ones. Hello again, Lieblings, I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in Southern Germany since 2014. Today, we're going to talk about habits, German habits. I have talked about how Germany has changed me, but I want to dive into some of the other habits I have adopted since moving to the land of beer and pretzels. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. So let's get to that list. Number one, more direct emails. Americans and Peruvians require a little preamble in their emails. Americans usually start with, hi, hope you're doing well, or some, some rather vague thing or whatever, but still trying to put a humanistic spin when they're writing an email. Peruvians require a lot more than that. Communications and interpersonal relationships between colleagues are very important components in improving work ethic. So when I first moved to Germany, I learned that I didn't have to do any of this preamble beforehand. Like, you just say, you know, hi, and then you just start the email. You don't have to do like, how are you doing? Or I hope you're doing well. You just go straight to the point. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, it was a little weird at first. It's not, you know, so life altering that, you know, that, that I couldn't accept it. But I am now, you know, I got into the habit enough that when I'm writing to my German colleagues, I know I don't have to fill out some kind of preamble. However, I know that when my German colleagues have to write to an American or a Latino, I do advise that they add a quip, hope you're doing well, or something in the beginning. You don't have to act like you're a best friend to, you know, whoever you're writing this email to, but it does help with rapport when you're going to need a favor <laughs> or if you're working with a client or whatever, and, you know, especially if they need to get feedback from you, uh, when you've given them that humanistic approach, it does make it easier down the line. Number two, sleeping with my own blanket. When I first moved to Germany, we were given one largish duvet that barely covered the bed, and yet it was supposed to be enough for two people. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. <laughs> Even back in the States, my husband and I share a large blanket that actually does reach the floor, and it's still not big enough for the two of us. So we finally ended up going for two blankets after about the first month or so of living together. And man, my sleeping has never been better. Seriously, why aren't more people doing this? Number three, drinking coffee. I am a tea drinker. If you saw my video with Austin-esque author Gailey Ruth Karras, I was drinking tea like throughout that whole interview. <laughs> I love tea and I have enough tea to open my own tea shop, but I won't because it's my tea and I'm going to drink it someday. <laughs> Until then, I'm going to just keep dropping more money on more tea that I just ordered. <laughs> but here in Germany, there is a tradition known as Kaffee und Kuchen or coffee and cake. I have never eaten so much cake in my life until I moved to Germany. So much cake. At first, I used to drink tea when I was invited to Kaffee und Kuchen, but then I felt bad because it usually required my host to make an extra cup or a pot of tea just for me. And I, I did drink a little coffee back in the States. You know, with Latinos, we have cafe con leche, which is mostly like milk with a little bit of coffee <laughs> for the color. But I mean, in the end, I still prefer tea. Um, but because of this very frequent tradition of coffee and kuchen, I do drink coffee now. There was even a time that I would drink more coffee than tea. I am coffee. I am time itself. I am so full of caffeine, I can taste the colors. No, just kidding. I actually still prefer tea. <laughs> Number four, bringing my own bag when I go grocery shopping. I did actually start this habit when I was living in Chicago because in the city of Chicago, they do charge per bag and, you know, who wants to pay? But I didn't do that when I was living in Indiana because they didn't. I think some stores are doing that now, but it's still a lot slower in that in that sense. Anyway, the only time I do get bags here in Germany is on the occasion that I forget my very large Target bag, which is my favorite to use here. Um, because I have yet to find a bag in Germany that is as big as that Target bag. And when I do have to buy a bag in Germany, I usually buy paper because we actually use it as ignition for our, our boiler downstairs. So yeah, yay, multiple uses. <laughs> Number five, using 24-hour time, or as we in the States call it, military time. 
Yes, in the U.S., we do use the 24-hour time thingy, but like I said, we refer to it as military time because only our military uses it, and also in the sciences, so, you know, biology. <laughs> My dad was in the military, and I also have a biology degree, so for me, that wasn't actually, like, a huge culture shock when I moved here. And I will admit, like, yes, now outside of work, I use it more, you know, instead of just like when I was being a microbiologist, like I have my bullet journal and whenever I write something, it is easier for me to just write it in the 24 hour as opposed to with, you know, the 12 hour bit with AM and PM. And also when I'm talking to like in German to my German speaking friends or family, I will of course use it as well. But if I'm speaking in English, I still use AM and PM. Um, I just think, I do think the military time is better, is a better form of of telling time because it's more exact. But in terms of speaking in English, I still prefer the 12 hour AM PM bit, but that's that's weird. Eh? You just, I, I learned to adapt, it's okay. <laughs> Number six, wearing slippers. So there are a lot of videos about how it's very American to wear your shoes in the house. Well, you don't in Germany. The, the thing is though, I wasn't allowed to wear shoes in my house either. Um, unless my mom was hosting one of her like fancy dinner parties in which case I had to dress nice and that did include nice shoes but that's always been the rule in our house like and my mom had that rule because my parents built their house when I was 10 and my mom wanted our house to stay as nice and clean as possible so no shoes and I also have a very big family I am one of six kids and I have 17 nieces and nephews and some of them have kids too so you can imagine how chaotic family get-togethers can be at our house all that being said, I still never wore slippers. My parents do, and they have tried for years to get me to wear slippers, especially in the winter. I actually prefer to be barefoot year round. <laughs> I didn't wear slippers even for the first four years in Germany because the apartment we had in Überlingen had heated floors, so that was awesome. But now we live in my husband's family house and only a fraction of the rooms are even heated at all, nonetheless to a comfortable temperature. And yeah, I caved and I finally started wearing slippers. You win, mom and dad, you win. And number seven is falling out of the habit of using small talk. Now this, like I said, is a habit that I have dropped Except until I go back to Indiana and then, you know, I pick it right back up. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> but I have to say that there are days where I am okay with avoiding small talk, especially in the morning when I'm still not 100% awake. I have lost count how many times I have heard Germans accuse Americans of being fake because of our use of small talk. And it's not that. It is a way of maintaining connection, if only for a brief time. And it's also a sign of respect in our culture. I mean, you don't have to agree with it, but being able to engage in small talk is also, it is a good skill to have. It does make networking so much easier and it makes it easier to make friends when you move to another country. <laughs> it's nice that it's not mm, as necessary in Germany as it is in the States, but I will admit though, like, especially now that I haven't been in the States for a good while, I miss it. I do miss it. And what about you? What other habits? Those of you who have moved from your countries to Germany, what habits do you think that are very German or even American or even Peruvian? What do you think of these habits? I mean, it's the little things, right? And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want to find escapism, my space fantasy of the God Queen is available in ebook, paperback, and hardback. And the sequel, The Last Imperator, is available for pre-order. And also, don't forget to sign up for the Last Imperator pre-sale giveaway if you have pre-ordered. Also, 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 if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get the first six chapters of the God Queen as well as the prequel short story, The Knight and the Goddess. So sign up! and also times a million. <laughs> if you have read any of my work or the work of your favorite author, please leave us a review. They're really helpful to us authors and it is free to do so. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, or the Facebooks. And that's it. Until next time, adieu.